This is code.org and we got some more dessert. So we already have a plain dessert. If you're missing this and the constructor, you need to go back to the other parts of this lesson. We're not missing it. Let's see what we got. The dessert class represents desserts. Shocking. Oh yeah, Mercury food truck. It has a... By the way, if you're wondering, students, as I had mine do, Google Project Mercury if you're bored. It's kind of cool. All right, anyways. Project Mercury, even though I wouldn't associate it with food, Mercury is poisonous. It has instance variables for flavor and price. Write a parameterized, woo, fancy words, constructor with the parameters string, new flavor, and double price. All right, so heading back over here. Now, we know what a parameter is, right? That's when there's stuff up in here, right? There's options within a method there to, to pass a method information. So if we're doing a constructor, well, we should be pros at this. We are pros at this. We already have one right here that we created. So same deal, public dessert, because it is this constructor still. I go ahead and do my parentheses and my curly brackets, because otherwise I'll forget in four seconds. So bam, there we are. Now with that set up, what do we need? Write a parameterized constructor with parameter string new flavor. Cool. So right here, whoop, string new flavor with the camel case and a comma because it looks like we need double new price. Cool. All right. In the body of the constructor, initialize the instance variables flavor to new flavor. And initialize just means assign, right? If we're initializing an object, if we're instantiating an object, what we're doing is initializing it to be this, right? So we're assigning plain dessert to this uh, new dessert, to the dessert class and instantiating an object. So now we're going to initialize new flavor, or we're initializing, let's, terminology is important, initialize the instant variables flavor. Okay, so that could also be considered a property, but fine, instant variable flavor to be new flavor. Boom. And now we're going to set price equal to new price. Now, why are we doing this? Well, this allows us to use something other than the default value. So if they just want to run dessert like that when they create, when they instantiate an object, bam, it will be a plain dessert and its price will be free. Lucky you. However, if we want to actually give it a different flavor and set the price, we can also do so the second we create it, all right? We can change it up from default values. And that's what this allows. So we pass in new flavor and we instantly say, oh, yep, flavor is now equal to this new flavor. New price, price is now equal to this new price. And we're good to go, right? We don't have to worry about that anymore. These values inside of our object, uh, these attributes are set to be what we need. All right, instantiate a dessert object, bam, called chocolate desserts. So I'm actually going to leave this one since that's from level three. We're on level four. So dessert, chocolate dessert. I enjoy chocolate. Is it cake? Uh, Chocolate cake, I kind of like vanilla cake. I don't want to start like a fight, but mm, anyways. New dessert, and what is this? Using, oh yeah, okay. And now we have flavor first, right? Chocolate. <laughs> Shockingly chocolate dessert, the flavor guys is, is chocolate. And then 2.99. Uh, my sister doesn't like chocolate, so you know, I'm just, just putting it out there that I'm a good person, she's not. Uh, cool. Let's see if this works. And if it works, it just means we won't get an error. But, uh, sweet. If you want to double, triple check that this is actually functioning, you can always do something like some of my students like to do this. This isn't required. So public void hello. All I'm doing is printing out the flavor variable. And then right here, I can just do dot notation. But uh, it definitely works. Let me get rid of that. And on, oop, and this, onward. 